Here on the city's south side, the neighborhoods around Tower Grove Park have gained a new vitality in recent years. A big part of the attraction is that nearby residents can leave their cars at home. They can walk to some of the city's best ethnic restaurants, eclectic shopping, all in a friendly, even small town atmosphere. It's a lifestyle that is pulling people back to the city. Veronica Campbell and her husband recently returned to South City after years of living in Chesterfield. We decided we'd like to come back to city living. Now that our children are grown and out of the nest, I don't have to cook as often, and so we hit the, the Vietnamese and the Bosnian and the Italian uh, restaurants, all that are, that are nearby here. Tower Grove Park is a big, beautiful park where our Labrador, our dog, loves to run and play ball, and that's just a couple blocks away. It's an exciting time right now because it's going the right direction now. There were years of decline and now it's going the right direction, a lot of progress. The Tower Grove South neighborhood where the Campbells live is filled with beautiful historic architecture. But not every building in this area has been rehabbed. For years, this apartment building at the corner of Utah and Gustine sat boarded up, burned out, and blighting the neighborhood. The building has always been a problem the whole time I've been here, and it was a site of numerous fires. It was almost, I mean, it seemed like it was once a month we'd hear the fire trucks go down the street and we'd say, oh, the Capistrano again. Susie Gutermuth moved to this neighborhood 20 years ago. She soon started rehabbing homes. What started as an avocation quickly grew. Today, Susie has rehabbed more than 40 homes in the neighborhood. But her biggest project yet is the Capistrano. If I didn't do it, I couldn't complain about how it was done. So I just felt like I had to do it. Years of neglect and decay had taken their toll on the building. It was rough. Uh, in fact, the first thing went through my mind was, why don't we tear it down and, and uh, put up four or five new houses that look like they belong in the neighborhood. It wasn't well maintained. The exterior of the building was terrible. It was uh, really neat, a tuck pointing bad, and somebody gave it a lick and a promise 30, 40 years ago, but they didn't do a very good job, but then. And I see closing in this whole area here. Susie's plan for the building is a complete gut rehab truly building a new Capistrano from the brick walls in. The progress got underway last January with demolition. It takes a special guy to go in and get involved in that mess because uh, it's, it's, it's dirty. It can be dangerous, and it's dangerous even if you are careful, accidents can happen. I'm glad they're doing it, not me. With the old material out of the way, Jim's crew started rebuilding from the floors up. One of the problems was from day one when they built the place, the plumber notched these joists right in here, as you can see, to get the accommodate for the tub drain. Well, when you start doing that, you're down to a 2 by 8 instead of a 2 by 10 and we got too great of a span for that size member. Cut out the four joists that are bad uh, and then replace them with new joists and put new sheeting down at the top of that. And uh, rebuild the floors to the as 
and you get them as level as you can. In March, new concrete footings were placed in the basement to support the new wall configurations. We're going to have a point load right here that's going to carry all three floors and the roof load will all concentrate on this point. So we have to distribute the, the weight across, over a big area in the footing. And then we poured about a foot thick so that it's going to support that. We had about two yards of concrete coming for these four columns today. The concrete is cured and we can start stacking some weight on it. Within a, within a week we'll have quite a bit of weight on it. By late spring, walls were reconfigured. On all three floors in this unit, there's a bearing wall that runs right down the middle, cuts the space up in half. That was okay when it was apartments and you had smaller rooms. We don't want that. We want wide open spaces to create good living areas. So in order to do that, we have to take the bearing wall out on each floor. You have to support the loads above you temporarily while you're trying to work on the new beams. By late summer, they were ready to install new windows, more than 90 of them. First thing is we take the old stuff apart and throw it away and start putting the new stuff in. September, the arrival of drywall was a big moment. We're day three of drywall. This is the uh, third morning so far of ha having hangers on the job. Uh, we're having great progress. You don't, you don't see too many old hangers. It's, just, it's hard on you. It's hard work. It's a lot of heavy lifting. The drywall hanger, you have to hang it all. Then the tapers will show up and put the tape on and to make it a smooth surface so that it can be painted.
By November, almost a year after the project began, the building was ready for landscaping. It's been a long haul, but the work is almost complete. The finishing touches are being put into place, and soon this once blighted building will be a neighborhood asset.